We often think of tears crying as a bad thing, but what does it mean in a spiritual sense? What does it mean in a physical sense? Uh, we've got a guest here to talk about his new book related to tears, and it's not who you might think. Welcome to a special broadcast for Skywatch TV. This is, it's Thursday, February 23rd, 2017. I'm Derek Gilbert, and with me, the author of a new book, Tears, an Ocean of Emotion. And look at that, it's Steve Quayle. Steve, welcome to Skywatch TV. <laughs> Hi, it's good to see you again. You know, an amazing book because this is so out of character for the stuff I talk about, write about. <laughs> Amen. And I was telling Sharon, your wife, earlier about how this came to be. And what's interesting is that I, I was in the shower, okay? And people have got to understand this. This is not what I usually think about at night, okay? I'm thinking about out there stuff. Mm -hmm. And when I was in the shower one day, God dropped the word tears, an ocean of emotion, into my spirit. I mean, right before my very eyes as the water from the shower head was flowing on me. I tell people the reason I believe God uses his shower as a, a place to talk to me is because it's the only place where I shut up and shut down long enough to listen <laughs> to him. And I'm not proud of that, but I just I go 100 miles an hour. At least I can't be walking and talking in the shower without bouncing off the walls. Mm -hmm. But I want people to know that it's an amazing concept in the Bible. I want to read Psalm 56, 1, verse 1 and 8. It's really important. Be merciful unto me, O God, for man would swallow me up. He, fighting daily, oppresses me. You count my wanderings, put you my tears into thy bottle. Are they not in thy book? When I was in the shower, the words, Jesus wept, came to me. And the shortest sentence in the New Testament, Jesus wept. Instantly, I got a burst transmission. This is not OCD Steve. This is a linear presentation by the goodness of God to me, dropping a concept and a layout for a book into me. And I was kind of, was kind of taken back by this because obviously Tom Horn and I are working on our you know, combined or composite book. Mm -hmm. Tim and I are working on this. And I thought, Lord, I've, I've, I've learned to, you know, my, my heart's cry is to be obedient, okay? Not the easiest task, but that's my heart's cry. And literally that term, heart's cry, means a lot because your, your heart can say different things in your head. You know, and so as this was coming to me, Jesus wept. I got the understanding of something. The idea that every tear is unique to every person and every person's tears are unique to their DNA, the way they mm. relate to their world. And by the way, there's, I go into the science of this, but the bottom line, in, and I like to do the bottom line and work backwards. I've been teaching Tom since we've been on the radio together and now on TV. I said, Tom, give him the bottom line and work backwards. But the bottom line on tears is it's God's expression or it's our expression to God of our total composite life's experience. You can have tears of laughter, tears of joy, tears of defeat, every single human emotion. Obviously, we can't you know, cover them all in 12 minutes. But as I started to ponder that Jesus wept, it dawned on me. And listen, when I say it dawned on me, I, I, the, the more correct way is that God instantly put it into my spirit. Right that when Jesus wept, he was caring. We know from Isaiah that the chastisement of our peace was upon him, you know, that he bore our griefs and our sorrows and instantly understood that not only did Jesus cover our sins, but the composite experience of our life was in his heart. And those tears of Jesus weeping weren't just over Jerusalem, weren't just over that because he wept in the Garden of Gethsemane. Mm -hmm. It said he even sweat as if, if it, as it were, drops of blood, you know. But the point is, is that the idea is this, Derek, and I'll give people the bottom line, then tell them some cool stuff, okay? That our tears in the memory capacity they have are infinite, okay? And it's kind of like the 139th Psalm where God says, more numerous than the sand of the sea, so are his thoughts towards us. Mm -hmm. Most people don't understand the neurochemical processes of tears. Now, I thought there might be a difference, and, but when I started to look at the science behind this, it was phenomenal. Every tear, every chemical, every neurochemical, every bodily process, every perception has a different, if you will, multidimensional matrix, okay, of how it relates to you and how you relate to it. In other words, would you have ever thought that your tears could tell the same story your DNA does? Hmm. That's hmm. very, very, it, I know, and, and it's not meant to be es esoteric in any way, shape, or form. The scripture is very clear that the tears of the righteous 
are at one point when we get to heaven offered on God's throne. And I saw this very neat. It was like our, all of our lives, okay, covered by the blood of Jesus, poured out literally on the mercy seat in heaven and mm-hmm. offered up as a praise to God. Hmm. And it's a how great thou art moment, mm-hmm. you know. And so it, I've been praying, and I think this is a good prayer for everybody, that God would show us the world the way he sees it, okay, you know what I'm saying, and teach us how to relate to it from his perspective. Because I've often said, I've said, Lord, uh, the tears of the slaughtered, the tears of the aborted, the tears of the abandoned, you know, the tears of the murdered. What, what God, what, how can I even begin to grasp that? That's been a cry of my heart, okay? I once said, and I, I mean this sincerely, I, I, I want in heaven to literally meet every, and I got a long time to do it. I mean, mm-hmm. I got eternity. But the first thing I will say, and maybe this is my humanism, but I said, I mean, I'm a human. You know, sometimes I question that, and so do my critics. But the point <laughs> is, is that, you know, Lord, all these little ones that never had a voice, yeah. I just want to simply say, forgive me for not making a better fight. You know, and God's forgiven me. But the greatest tragedy is how many of these lives, there's some total of their essence and being that will never be. Now, yeah. I know God, you know, handles it. But as I was as I was pondering this, it came into my my heart this the scripture. Okay, you remember the woman who comes into the Pharisee's house and Jesus is having meat. You know, I mean, the Pharisee says, "Come and eat for dinner." And what showed up for dinner on on Jesus' side was incredible mercy, forgiveness, and love. And the woman, you know, I I'm, I'm going to go say, "Thank you for your testimony through time." Mm-hmm. The woman who was a prostitute. Let's face it. You know, he comes in and she stands behind Jesus and she begins to to cry. She begins to pour her entire life's experience out to the Savior. She knew who he was. Mm-hmm. She knew who what her sin was. And what does the scripture say? She then begins to dry, wash her, uh, Jesus' feet with her hair. Now, feet in the middle, you know, the Middle East weren't, you know, the cleanest thing. Dusty, dirty, dusty, and they're not dirty. They're wearing sandals. So, and, yeah. And, and, right. and what, is, what does the scripture say about a woman's hair? It is her uh, glory. 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 Yeah. So you've got the tears of a repentant sinner who absolutely knows all those tears, and I believe this, are expressing every single life experience. I don't know what happened to her when she was a little girl. I don't even want to, you know, ponder the abuse she must have taken at the hands of men. Yet here she is in the presence of Jesus. Mm -hmm. She's pouring her heart out, the sum total of her being, at the feet of Jesus. She's washing with the glory that God had given to her. And by the way, I'm sure she had beautiful hair because I'm sure she was a beautiful woman. Someone says, you don't know that. Well, I got news for you. Uh, Generally, you can deduce some things. And then what does she do? She takes the most precious commodity that she owns, the ointment in the alabaster box, okay? And she begins to anoint his feet. Now, remember, in those days, Silver and gold were good, but some of the anointments and the, you know, different uh, gold, frankincense, and myrrh were, were as important, if not more so, than gold or silver. One of the greatest, I believe, illustrations that anybody can grasp. So the book is written to heal hearts because I don't think people know how to grieve or mourn, you know? I really don't. And mourning cannot be hurried. It just can't. It is a process, you know? That's why people say you got to cry your heart out. Mm -hmm. you got to pour your heart out. Well, you pour your heart out in tears. One last thing, and then I want to, you know, uh, this is just the introduction, (laughs) is that the tears are literally the ink in the book of life. Oh. Yeah, brother, when I got that, I got, man, I'm going to just live in a shower, you know, I I mean, because (laughs) because it's it's revelation. Yeah. So this is a different kind of book. And I make the distinction between the tears of the righteous that are poured out on the altar, the mercy seat of God, and and the wonder of the salvation of the King of Kings and Lord of Lords versus the tears of the damned. Because the rich man in hell lifts up his eyes. Mm. And isn't it interesting that he wants, you know, the rich man in hell wants Lazarus, the guy he wouldn't even feed the crumbs to off his table, to come and dip his finger in the water. I was shaking my head on that one. Mm -hmm. But then Jesus talked about hell. Hell's very real. It's not a metaphor. It's real. Jesus said there was a certain man, okay, 
And, and in his kindness, he didn't say it was Fred Jones. He was a real jerk and he went to hell. You know what I'm saying? Uh, we may do that, but Jesus didn't mm-hmm. do that. But it said, in hell, there's weeping and gnashing of teeth where their worm dieth not. To the redeemed, the composite being of their emotional and the way they relate to everything, the way we relate to everything, each other, that's poured out. It's forgiven under the blood of Jesus. To the unrepentant, they take that with them into eternity where there's a weeping and gnashing of teeth. So the sum total of their experience, and I'll tell you this, I asked preachers, I asked even Sharon, if she's, when I say Sharon, I said, have you ever heard this? And I talked, I you know, ran it by a couple of preachers and said, no, you know? So I know this is a revelation for this time because God's getting us ready to deal with the great loss. And I don't know what that means. And, you know, I said, Lord, I'm called to be a watchman, you know? Well, that's ending. I don't mean I won't quit doing what mm-hmm. I'm doing, but I believe God wanted this book released, okay? Because I said, show me how you see it. And to my knowledge, this is a revelation that will absolutely bless people. This is meant to bless people. It's, you know, 70, 80% scripture, mm-hmm. and it's scripture applied to reality. Mm. The secret nature of tears revealed, uh, you know, if you were like me and uh, you men like me, you grew up being told by your parents and by coaches, and <laughs> look, big boys don't cry. Um, but I remember my dad, when he got to about my age, uh, began to change and became more emotional. And he said, you know, keeping that emotion inside from people that you really love and care about, he said, that's stupid. It is stupid. <laughs> yeah. So, yes, it is very timely. Uh, tears, an ocean of emotion, not what you'd expect from Steve Quayle, but... Uh, um, not uh, what Steve Quayle would expect from Steve <laughs> Quayle. <laughs> we appreciate you bringing this by and sharing this with us. Uh, and uh, y- you will want to be looking forward to something maybe a little more like what you expect. But t- please, don't, o- don't overlook this. Because a- as we get older, I-, I find myself getting, you know, following in footsteps. Sharon will attest to this. That, uh, I cry at, you know, seeing things from my childhood, television shows that I, I loved as a kid, you know, back on TV again, old Doctor Who episodes will make me, <laughs> which is silly, I know, but... But it touches your heart, okay? It, it touches your heart. It made an impression, and you respond to it with the emotions. Why? You know, it, it's, look, it's like this. There's a, I do, it's second chapter in here is on elephants, okay? Elephants treat each member of their herd better than Christians treat each other. I never knew the social development of elephants until I read the story and I started reading about elephants, you know, and elephants bury their dead. They, re- they revisit the place where their loved ones died. Mother elephants grieve and they literally tear. Uh, I think it was Ragu or uh, uh, an elephant that a Thai elephant was released after 50 years in captivity of abuse and he sat and wept. Or another elephant and East, you saw the story. Man, I'm telling you what, man, they're pouring down my face, excuse me, you know, in, into my beard and it looked like, I mean, and it touched my heart so deeply. And then the story of another elephant that was shot in the head by a hunter and didn't die and he wanders something like a hundred miles into a camp where there's veterinarians and he lays down and allows them to heal him you know take the bullet out and 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 bind up his wounds and then he when he's strong enough he walks out of the camp goes back to his herd but he looks over and trumpets as if to say see you guys thank you and so you know it's changing my heart i'm 65 you know i'm I, I, I actually hate to admit that, hmm. um, you know, the idea was to be a perpetual teenager, but, you know, as wise will tell you, it's time to grow up. And hmm. my answer to that has always been, why? Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, but the point is, is that I believe this is a book that God wanted written. I can take no credit for it, you know, because, again, the man that wrote uh, for me the last six, and I told uh, Sharon this, the last six chapters of this book, I ran out of time. And so I asked my friend, Duncan, to write it. He, I didn't pick up on the fact that he said it was the toughest thing for him to do. He made that statement, and I was so focused. But then I found out that, you know, after the book was finished, he was dying. He died within a matter of weeks oh. after saying that to me. And I felt like, what a heal, me, you know? But I, I, I think I told Tom this, and forgive me if I told Sharon this, I got a chance to pray with him and bless him. And I said, Dunk, there's a whole host in heaven re- getting ready to meet you. Yeah. Because I said, you don't know how many lives you've touched, you know. Mm-hmm. And 
did, did I mean, obviously God knew he was going to take him home, you know, but this book is, is so meaningful because, you know, uh, I had a brother that was murdered and I never had resolution, never found his body. You know, they knew who killed him, you know, and this is like 30 years ago, maybe, maybe 40 years now. And I can tell you this, when you carry unresolved issues that long, they eat you up inside. But when God touches you, you know, and, you know, puts his hand on you, I think this book is going to be used as a ministry tool to set a lot of people free. Number one, I was raised the same way as you were, only I was raised in a very violent household by a dad who was an alcoholic, okay, and his idea of a a good spanking was a pistol whipping, okay, and I, I wouldn't wish that on anybody. Uh, you know, the thing is, is that the issues that we deal with in life all come into focus. And, you know, that's what I, I love the words of Jesus. You know, behold, I make all things new, you mm-hmm. know. And so that's why this book is important. I think it'll bless you. And I, I want to share this. I think it will bless everyone because, you know, I read it and I cry. By the way, Derek, I cry at happy endings. Mm-hmm. I, I say to my wife, look, I want to watch something that's got a happy ending. I don't even care if it's Lassie or Fury. I was raised on Lassie, Fury, and my friend Flicka, Okay. Is that a, that's at the beginning of television, yeah. ladies and gentlemen. But it always, and Sky King and Penny, okay? Those heart-melting moments, okay? Or those heartbreaking moments are all precious to the Lord. And he is able to save to the uttermost those who put their trust in him. That's why this book was mm-hmm. written. Tears, an ocean of emotion. Steve Quayle is the author and a book available now? Yeah, it's yeah. available now. And it'll be available, you know, through Skywatch and right. through on your book. SkyWatchTVStore.com, and uh, do keep watching because in the weeks ahead, you're going to hear about the forthcoming documentary film, True Legends. There were giants and a book that goes along with it titled Unearthing the Lost World of the Cloud Eaters, but you'll have to wait at least a few weeks for that. Steve, a thank blessing. you, Derek. Thank you, and thank you for watching as we keep watch. I'm Derek Gilbert, and this is SkyWatch TV. You've been fighting in a war against an enemy you've been told doesn't even exist. Skywatch TV wants to change that to prepare you for the battles ahead. Beginning March 7th, exclusively from Skywatch TV, the Cosmic War Collection finally arrives. Featuring three groundbreaking books, a five-hour DVD, and a seven-hour audio series showing you how real the supernatural War of Kingdoms actually is. Reversing Hermon by acclaimed Bible and ancient language scholar Dr. Michael S. Heiser and The Great Inception by Skywatch TV's Derek P. Gilbert. You'll learn how Christ's full mission has been misunderstood for 2,000 years. Not only did he come to shed his blood to redeem mankind, Jesus was on a mission to reverse the sin of the angelic watchers who descended on Mount Hermon. You'll also discover how Bible stories you've known since childhood were literal battles in the spirit realm between God and the gods who rebelled. When you order the Cosmic War Collection from Skywatch TV, you'll receive Reversing Hermon by Dr. Michael S. Heiser, The Great Inception by Derek P. Gilbert, a new, exclusive, never-before-offered deluxe hardcover collector's edition of the Book of Enoch. The Real Clash of the Titans DVD, a special never-before-released video compilation with five hours of teaching on the long war between God and the gods. And The Unseen Adversary, a brand new audio series on MP3 disc with seven hours of Derek P. Gilbert interviewing Dr. Michael Heiser on The Watchers, UFOs, and The Great Cosmic Rebellion of Satanic Forces. A value of more than $100, yours for just $29.95. The Cosmic War Collection, available beginning March 7th only from Skywatch TV. Know your enemy, order the Cosmic War Collection beginning March 7th by calling 844-750-4985 or log on to skywatchtvstore.com. What's interesting is that I I was in the shower, okay? And people have got to understand this. This is not what I usually think about at night, okay? I'm thinking about out there stuff. Mm -hmm. And 
when I was in the shower one day, God dropped the word tears, an ocean of emotion into my spirit. I mean, right before my very eyes as the water from the shower head was flowing on me. I tell people the reason I believe God uses his shower as a, a place to talk to me is because it's the only place where I shut up and shut down long enough <laughs> to listen to him. And I'm not proud of that, but I just, I go 100 miles an hour. At least I can't be walking and talking in the shower without bouncing off the walls. Mm -hmm. But I want people to know that it's an amazing concept in the Bible. I want to read Psalm 56, 1, verse 1 and 8. It's really important. Heart's cry is to be obedient, okay? Not the easiest task, but that's my heart's cry. And literally that term, heart's cry, means a lot because your your heart can say different things in your head, you know? And so as this was coming to me, Jesus wept. I got the understanding of something. The idea that every tear is unique to every person and every person's tears are unique to their DNA, the way they mm. relate to their world. And by the way, there's, I go into the science of this, but the bottom line in, and I like to do the bottom line and work backwards. I've been teaching Tom since we've been on the radio together and now on TV. I said, Tom, give them the bottom line and work backwards. But the bottom line on tears is it's God's expression. We often think of tears crying as a bad thing, but what does it mean in a spiritual sense? What does it mean in a physical sense? Uh, we've got a guest here to talk about his new book related to tears, and it's not who you might think. Welcome to a special broadcast for Skywatch TV. This is, it's Thursday, February 23rd, 2017. I'm Derek Gilbert, and with me, the author of a new book, Tears, an ocean of emotion. And look at that, it's Steve Quayle. Steve, welcome to Skywatch TV. <laughs> Hi, it's good to see you again. You know, an amazing book because this is so out of character for the stuff I talk about, write about. <laughs> Amen. And I was telling Sharon, your wife earlier, about how this came to be. And be merciful unto me, O God, for man would swallow me up. He fighting daily oppresses me. You count my wanderings, put you my tears into thy bottle. Are they not in thy book? When I was in the shower the words, Jesus wept, came to me. And the shortest sentence in the New Testament, Jesus wept. Instantly, I got a burst transmission. This is not OCD Steve. This is a linear presentation by the goodness of God to me, dropping a concept and a layout for a book into me. And I was kind of, I was kind of taken back by this because obviously Tom Horn and I are working on our you know combined or composite book. Mm -hmm. Tim and I are working on this, and I thought, Lord, I've I've, I've learned to you know my my passion, or it's our expression to God of our total composite life's experience. You can have tears of laughter, tears of joy, tears of defeat, every single human emotion. Obviously, we can't you know cover them all in twelve minutes, but as I started to ponder that Jesus wept. It dawned on me, and listen, when I say it dawned on me, I, I, the, the more correct way is that God instantly put it into my spirit right. that when Jesus wept, he was caring. We know from Isaiah that the chastisement of our peace was upon him, you know, that he bore our griefs and our sorrows and instantly understood that not only did Jesus cover our sins, but the composite experience of our life was in his heart and those